Hello, I'm Sebastian Folks, and my new book is called Snow Country, coming out in September. But rather than talk about my own book, I'm going to talk about two or three I've pulled off the shelf behind me um, very briefly. First, starting with the stories of John Cheever, which I've been reading recently. These are stories set in America after the Second World War, mostly in the 50s. Uh, and they're about people in the suburbs, largely. I mean, they, they vary a bit. Some are set in Italy. But a, a typical Chiva story um, has a rather hard pushed man who's hoping for promotion in his rather dreary job in New York and commutes out to a suburban town called Shady Hill, um, which is a rather competitive bourgeois environment where everyone drinks far too much. Huge amounts of old fashions and martinis and Manhattans get consumed by Chiva characters. And quite often bad things happen. Uh, men misbehave, women misbehave, and on the train between uh, Grand Central Station or Penn Station and the suburbs, um, all sorts of mysterious things get played out. Secrets get hidden or exposed, and sometimes there's violence, often there's despair. Um, but they, they're also funny. They're, they're superbly well written. And I think the difficulty with short stories is that either they turn out to be like an anecdote with a little kick in the tail, which is like a Saki story, which is OK, but it's a bit annoying. Or else they're just a slice of life. They're like a sausage and you've just taken two inches out of the sausage and they're a bit sort of, so what? You could have taken another two inches. You know, what's the point? And I think the best stories have a, they have a development and a turn, but at the same time, they don't feel like an anecdote. And I think that's where Cheever's stories are so brilliant. They have, a, they have a point to them and an end to them, and you know, there is a development to them, but they're not pat or over neat. But really, to read them is just to, to, to wallow in a, in a different world, a different period. And they are pretty sad, it has to be said. All these people are striving so hard to live the great life of material wealth and success in, in America and post-war America and the boom. But it's, it's really tough, and getting a promotion is really tough and your wife's drinking too much, and you're drinking too much. And I often think of Cheever's characters as the parents of the hippie generation. So just when these people are beginning to think they have cracked it, they've moved into a slightly nicer house, slightly better part of the suburb, their kid, who's in his sort of second year at college, grows his hair down to his backside and tells, tells them they've got it all wrong, and he's going to tune in and turn out and drop out. And you think, gosh... After all I've been through, you know, they fought in the Pacific. I fought so hard to get a job and a nice house, and now I've been told I got it all wrong. So, but they are wonderful stories, hugely enjoyable. This is uh, a little book called Keats, Poetical Works. And uh, Keats uh, meant a great deal to me when I was uh, a student. And I'm not going to uh, tell you all about Keats, because if you don't know all about Keats already, you really shouldn't be watching this. Um, Here's a photograph of his grave in Rome, where I made a pilgrimage when I was 17 and took this photograph in the Protestant cemetery in Rome. And um, rather than um, tell you everything that you already know about this um, London poet who died so young, I'll just read you um, a sonnet of his which came to light after he had died. When I have fears that I may cease to be before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before high-piled books in charactery hold like rich garners the full ripened grain. When I behold upon the night-starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance, and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance, and when I feel, fair creature of an hour, that I shall never look upon thee more, Never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love. Then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think till love and fame to nothingness do sink. And the third book uh, I've pulled off the shelf is this. It's called The Black Prince by Iris Murdoch. Um, and Iris Murdoch was uh, a very popular uh, novelist when I was younger in my 20s, I suppose, or she started publishing in, in the 50s, I think. And Iris Murdoch was a don at Oxford, a professor of um, philosophy. 
actually I'm not sure she was a professor, but anyway, she was a teacher of philosophy. Um, and a lot of rather high-flown criticism about her books talks about sort of platonic this and Kant that and so on. I don't really see that in her books at all. Um, I, what I do see is fantastic storyteller. Um, of course, there are sort of moral dimensions as the characters struggle to do the right thing. They, they're, they're very, uh, they're always falling tremendously, helplessly in love with one another. But uh, what is so gripping about her is is the is the narrative momentum, and the Black Prince is about a a, a man called Bradley Pearson who is a a rather disappointed writer of a certain age, rather dry and dusty, uh, who falls in love with um, the daughter of a friend of his, who is far too young for him, really. And I can't remember how young. I, if I, I might be shocked if I found out, actually. But anyway, uh, it's all about, about this overpowering passion. Um, and, but it's also a very plotty book and things, hairs which are set running early on um, come back later on. And it's, it's also a book which is told in quite a modern way. Inside is a narrator who tells a story and then there's a box, another box inside. And then at the end you climb out of the boxes and it, it has this sort of quite modern framing device. And I remember finishing this book when I'm, I was about probably 21 when I read it. And I was just so excited and so exhilarated. I remember walking down the street outside my parents' house and feeling my head was just about to sort of explode with um, pleasure. It's interesting, I think, looking at the flap of the book, um, the publisher, um, Chateau and Windus, writes, The Black Prince is a story about being in love. It is also a study of an artist's inspiration, a love song to Shakespeare, and many other things. It is certainly a very exciting tale, obviously struggling to put into words um, what, what on earth they think it is about. Um, and Iris Murdoch was a, a, a wonderful woman, I mean quite bonkers really, I met her once. Um, and her letters are really excruciatingly terrible. Um, and she was completely unedited by her publisher and her sentences are all over the shop. But boy, um, could she write a story that you had you hanging on. It's like a sort of Geoffrey Archer story for grown-ups. Fantastic book. I wonder if it survived. I don't know. Read it and find out. The Black Prince.